All right, let's see, I'm gonna turn this here. I got so much to do. We're gonna go here, put the live chat on. I'm gonna go to my computer, live chat. Let's see how we're doing with everyone. Videos, oh, I lower this. Sorry, I just got myself set up, everybody. Let's see if we can uh, get this going. Like my live chat. Oh, my hair looks terrible, my hair looks terrible. Let's see. <laughs> Just the camera, there we go. Everybody, uh, it's been a, a while since I have gone live. I have so much going on, um, so much going on. It's unbelievable, and uh, I wanted to touch base with all of you out there and uh, see how you're all doing, holding up in the world, and talk about uh, my last two or three lessons that I haven't gone live. And and um, I see each and every one of you. I see all of you. Thank you for being here, and uh, much love. Uh, I feel like I should lower the camera. Okay. Um, so I'll answer questions um, about capos and you know pentatonic stuff that um, that uh, I did. Sorry, my mind is just. I wish I wish you know you could walk them not walk them on my shoes, but just there's so much going on with stitch method and trying to keep up with it. It's it's crazy. So before we get there, as you probably know, there's there's three things I want. Two things maybe I want to talk about. Number one. Uh, I'm gonna be doing two videos a week, all right? And I used, to, <laughs> I used to, when I first started, it was like eight videos a day. Uh, and then, you know, as things got busy, it was down to like two videos a month, and that's just unacceptable. And so I, I'm gonna be trying to do uh, two videos a week. One video that's gonna be um, uh, all about like the stitch method stuff, like the uh, pentatonics, improv, in the mind of stuff like that. And then a second video on Thursdays that's gonna be all about guitar fundamentals, things that guitar players should know a little bit more about, beginning stuff, intermediate stuff, just not geared towards the improv stuff, like today's video about the capo, just learning what a capo is and how it does, because, you know, a lot of people, they sing with this stuff, and if you're a singer-songwriter and you just want to play, I made that lesson today, so you can watch the capo lesson. Also, um, do go to stitchmethod.com and get a chance for two main reasons. Number one, I started putting my charts there. A lot of people, thank you, I'm glad you like Patreon. We can talk about Patreon in a second, and I appreciate that. Um, a lot of people I watch, I, you know, you have access as a YouTuber, you have access to analytics. And I can't stand when my capo is not level. And in the analytics world, which I really don't pay attention to, and I really should, I notice that it tells you what kind of devices everybody's <laughs> watching on. And it's, you know, phone, desktop, TV, computer, uh, gaming console. And um, I do get a lot of emails like, where can I get your charts? And if you're one of those people, I started putting all my charts up on Stitch Method, and they're organized per category, and they have a video right next to it, and blah, blah, blah. The last thing is, if you go to Stitch Method, again, the group lessons, they are going really well. If you have questions about any of the topics, and check back, I'm going to be doing a whole new schedule for June, hopefully in the next couple of days, and I'm going to pick some really cool topics, and different topics, and stuff like that, so stay with me there um, if you want to take lessons live with me, and it's really going well. I mean, like, everybody's enjoying it, and that's, I just dropped the ball on getting the schedule going, because there's so much going on. I'll, I'll, I'll shut up. I want to hear from you guys. So let's let's get some questions going um, about pentatonics, like the cage pentatonics, or um, the capo. Okay, is tuning the guitar with the capo on bad for the strings? No, not necessarily. And you kind of, 
Um, no, it's not. You want to tune the guitar, um, and you know what, and then you want to put your capo on, and sometimes, like, sometimes your capo doesn't sit right. It might pull a string, like, you might, like, pull a string and be out of tune, and, you know, you'd be like, okay, and you want to kind of readjust the capo, and you could, you could totally, uh, tune with your, with your capo on. Um, that's, that's not going to hurt the strings. It, it really isn't. It might, it might eventually rub the rubber under the capo raw, and so, um, is the, sorry, I'm going to answer that question, Rob, in a second. Is the sixth, the major third, or the fourth? I just got to answer that question. Yes, it is, Rob. Uh, Roger, sorry. Um, yeah. So sidetrack right there. Hold on. So, yes, yeah, so you can tune with your capo. That's not going to be a problem. And, uh, and Roger here asked, um, is the sixth interval the major third of the four? And yes, and if you want to find your major thirds, hello, Todd. If you want to find your major thirds, I mean, this is a music theory lesson. And again, I have music theory classes, but I'll answer this stuff here. Um, it's a great question, but if you want to find the major third of the chords, the way the chords are built in, out, of, out of a key scale, right? You have like the notes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Well, 1, 3, 5 is the first chord, right? 1, 3, and 5 is the first chord. It's that middle note that's the third. So the 3 is the major third of the 1. And then you have... Two, four, six is the next chord, so which means the four is the major third of the two. Three, five, seven means the five is the major third of the three chord. Four, six, and back to one means that six is the major third of the four. Let me know if I did okay with that. I gotta keep on watching my, my son and my dog are in that other room. Okay, so more questions, more questions. Um, uh, yeah, let's see. That major third sounds so good going to the four. Oh, it does. Oh, is there a limit to how high up the neck you should put the capo? I think, you know, it, um, in my video, did I put up the ninth fret? I think the ninth is like, uh, seventh to me, seventh to me um, is the highest fret. You can do nine out of necessity if you want to, but seven to me, because if you look at the charts or if, if you look, you can, get, you can get, you know, the key of E, F, G, A, B, C, uh, here and then D E F, uh, sorry D E F F sharp G A, and it pretty much starts again like around the seventh fret. So seventh fret is, is the highest I go. But if you need it for a nine for something, put it on a nine. Um, let's see if uh, how do you get out of a chord funk? Start soloing. <laughs> oh, okay. What exactly are the practice sessions you mean on Patreon account? Okay, well that's a great question. So um, you know, first of all. I gotta share this with you, and I, I again, all of you being here means a lot. But I hate like, I hate selling stuff. I don't know. You know, the whole idea behind the Patreon account is that I, I really want to give you guys more to do than you could possibly imagine, hopefully. Um, and um, so the idea behind the Patreon sessions, the uh, practice sessions and bonus lessons, is when I come out with a YouTube video, I make anywhere between three and ten videos. So the idea is, the the idea is you practice with me. Like, I will say, okay, here's a video on pentatonics. Let me show you how I practice that. And the idea is, is I'm going to sit and show you the ideas in the video, how I would practice them in different scenarios so that I become proficient at them. And so, to be honest, I still have to make the Patreon videos for my capo lesson. I've had a crazy day. I was up, I was pretty much up for 24 hours straight. And so the idea is, um, you know, for the Patreon video for this, I would be explaining, okay, let's let's take the capo off. Let's say we have a song in the key of F sharp. Okay, we're gonna practice this. We have, we have a blues in F sharp, and we need to play. And so, how are we gonna use our capo theory, right? How are we gonna use this? Okay, and again, this might be a Patreon video. I might just release this on Patreon. I'll show you. This would be an example. Okay, and so I need to find a C, the, the C groupings or the G groupings as F sharp. And so I'm looking for um, F sharps, and it's like, okay, well. Um, let's see, da, 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 the F sharp's up here, I can't do it, but there is an F sharp here, and I'll show you. And this is how I'll do it. Here's an F sharp here, so, and I'm, I'm gonna make this very, very quick. All right, so now we have, now we have the capo on the sixth fret. If we have it on the fifth fret for C shapes, it's, it's an F. If we bring it up one more fret, it's F sharp. So now my C is an F sharp, my F is the B, and my, sorry, really? My, my God, my C is the F sharp. Yeah, no, this is the, this is the B. And, and hold on, F sharp, B, again, C sharp, there it is, if I can do it. So now I have my F sharp, one, four, and five, and now I can play Tracy Chapman's, um, give me one reason, now it's here. And I'll do stuff like that and show you so that you guys can practice along. I'll stop talking. Um, all right, 
Ed Manningly. Let's see. Take a listen with Stitch ASAP. Oh, thank you, Ed. That was nice. Okay. Um, to get the sound out of a solo, do you learn certain moves, licks, and then connect them? Or like, whoa, crap. Hold on for one second, Sean. I'm sorry, Sean. To get the sound of a solo, do you learn certain moves, licks, and then connect them to, uh, to reinvent from scratch? A lot of Jerry solos seem to have a few common themes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, if you're studying a guitar player, like if you're studying Jerry Garcia, Jerry Garcia has those chromaticism. He has a lot of arpeggios that he'll um, <laughs> that he'll bend to. Like, oh, I have a I should take the cable off, right? Um, <laughs> hold on for one second, because you know there are these moves that you learn that he does in certain things, and so you bank them. You be, like Jerry Garcia style, okay? Three chromatically up to the five, a minor third, major third blend. Okay, hit a chord tone, but don't hit the chord tone. Bend up to the chord tone, and so the idea is: yes, you you learn the mindset, you learn the path, you learn if you can compare everything and uh, to the music that's happening, and you take a mental note and you try it on your own and it works, then you bank those ideas, and then that's how you can kind of pull up your own kind of like soloing machine. Um, uh, <laughs> so here we go. Um, Let's see, I see, uh, I see you put capo in the middle of the space between the frets. I find that can pull strings out of tune if capo is, uh, has a kung fu grip. Oh yeah, if capo has a kung fu grip, you can really warp it. This, is, this doesn't really have a kung fu grip. And I don't like to, uh, me personally, you know, like there is a sweet spot. You can do it like this, right? You can do it like that. But I got these fat chubby hands and sometimes when it, when it gets up high, it hits here and I don't like it. So I'll bring it back and I'll make sure, oh well not too back. Uh, I'll make sure it's in tune in the middle just so I have a little bit extra leeway. That's me, that's, that's me. Ivan Carter, wait a second, Ivan, Ivan Carter, did you just purchase the capo chart recently? D d did you see? Hey, Jam Lee, how are you? I feel like I just saw your name in my emails pop up, like when I was just like scrolling through the news, I think. Um, okay, does the capo lesson only work with songs in the key of C or G? No, 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 I'll explain something. This is a great question, Ed. Um, it's not about the key, this is the, the, the grouping, right? The, the, the C open grouping, C, D minor, e, e minor, F, G, and A minor, and uh, the G7, the chords that are easy to play and sound thick and good in open position along with the G set. You can possibly play the D shape chords, which would be D, E minor, you do have an F sharp minor bar, bar chord, uh, G major, A major, B minor, and you would have um, an A7 there. And you can use, you want to use familiar chord shapes, but you can move those, you can move those chord shapes anywhere, anywhere you want, you know? Um, and so it's not about the key, it's about using a familiarity of open chord shapes to get your, you know, like, you know, for instance, um, if I wrote a song, just to show you, like say I wrote a song, I'm a singer songwriter, and I, I wrote it in B, all right? Hey Jim, how are you? Um, what multi-guitar stand is that? I'll answer in the question, but if I wrote a song in B, like, And I want, ooh, that's out of tune, isn't it? One second, one second. And let's just say I'm not that good at bar chords or I don't want that bar chord sound. There she is. I don't want that bar chord sound. I don't want the chunkiness. Then it's like, okay, I want to I want to play with, with chord voicings that sound open, that sound up really well. So I know if I put my capo in the fourth fret, and I know this from the video uh, that I just did. I know this because I've been doing this for, you know, now I can play a G set, G's, uh, uh, A minors, uh, B minor, C, D, E minor, and D7, and I still have the key of B, and now, like, now my chords... It's the same key, but now they ring better, okay? So watch the capo video if you haven't seen it. I hope that uh, helped your question. One of the questions was, um, what, what guitar stand is this? I have no idea. I, <laughs> when I, if, you, if you go back into the annals of, of <laughs> Stitch Method, um, there's one video where this thing just appears in the back when I was in the very small room and I just ordered it off Amazon. I was like, I need a guitar stand and, and I'm, I can go for my orders, but I just, I needed a, a guitar stand and looked at it, it said multi guitar stand and I bought it and there it is with my guitars on it. Um, so there we go. <laughs> All right. Um, you're a beginner, but I love watching your videos. All right, uh, uh, is it Asmani? Uh, thank you for being here, I'm glad you do. I'm gonna be making more beginner, fundamental friendly videos. Um, yes, oh, this is great. David Ramirez says, uh, I feel like I see a lot of capos in acoustics and not so much in electric. Is that because people use power chords mostly in electric? No, um, and, and I will, um, thank you, I'll talk about Garcia. Um, 
this is my theory. This is one theory that's out there, all right? It's like, there's always exceptions, always exceptions, all right? But the reason you see capos on acoustic is because usually it's the acoustic guitar that has the singer behind it, all right? The singer-songwriter. And so, usually they'll write a song like, you know, I'm sitting in my truck and I'm waiting in the car wash, you know, da 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 And they'll use these chord sets and they don't want to think about playing bar chords. Right? And the idea is uh, the electric guitar player knows how to play the bar chords. <laughs> the electric guitar player can be like, oh, you know, I, I can play. Or they can even do it here without the capo. Really? So the electric guitar player, the lead guitar player, has the whole thing mapped out. His job is to navigate through that thing. And so you see, uh, you see it a lot in acoustic guitar playing. And I hope that made sense. All right? Um, when you drop a blues scale three frets, what's the turn in, what's the turn into a pentatonic scale? When you drop a blues scale, oh, three frets, okay, I think I, okay, what's up Jeff, I'll see you tomorrow. Jeff is one of my TAs for my group lessons, go to stitchmethod.com, not tonight, I have to redo the lessons, but if you want to take lessons live with me, you go to stitchmethod.com, you'll see me, you'll see Jeff, you'll see Kevin, you'll see Ed. You see a lot of people. All right, so this question here, I think this is the question. What, this is a great question because, because I think my next Thursday's lesson is going to be talking about this. So we'll do a little like one-on-one. All right, I think this is the question. If you take a blue scale and you have the one, the flat three, the four, the flat five, and the five, and then you have a flat seven, one, you have this little tiny chunk of it. What happens if you drop it three? And now what you have here, okay, so just... Uh, I'll do it here. This is a B minor or a B blue scale. B being the root. One, flat three, four, flat five, five, flat seven, one. All right, boom. All right, so now if I drop that three frets, bamo. Now it's become a B major pentatonic. Now I want to show you this, and you can have this here. But you're saying, well, what if we do this? What does that blue note become? Well, it's become one of the tastiest notes in bluegrass, which is if Jeff is watching, if Jeff's watching, we had a conversation about this. This now is the one, it's the two, a flat three, and a major third. And you get this a lot in bluegrass playing. And so it becomes a major minor third move. I hope that made sense. I'll stop talking on that matter, but I'll be uh, kind of explaining that with my good old acoustic. <laughs> I knew <laughs> Jeff, I was waiting. I was waiting for it, Jeff. <laughs> and so, anyway, uh, it'll be a great debate. Um, okay, so, uh, when you think of some great songs with capos, is it ever about the voice of the singer, like Stevie Nicks on Landslide? Well, you know, it's funny. It's really funny you say that. Um, yes, Sean, it is going to be a bluegrass lesson. Um, and so, uh, what was it? Okay, so Jim or Jam says, uh, when, you, when you think of some great songs, is it, is it ever about the voice of the singer like Stevie Nicks and Landslide? And w the reason that's such a good question is because, you know, Stevie Nicks was like, hey, you know, they probably wrote the song Landslide in open position. That's the, wrong, that's the wrong chord progression. But, and she said, guys, like, I can't sing it that low. My wheelhouse is up more. And so they slapped in their capos so that they could meet her voice. And it sounds so good because she didn't have to strain it. So, you know, usually capos are put on because they want to emphasize the singer's voice. Uh, and they want to put it in his wheelhouse. It's the same effect of Guns N' Roses detuning to E flat so Axl Rose can, can stay in the E flat and not go up to the high E. You're suiting the singer's um, needs and it works very well. I'll stop talking. Cool, you got to learn to play everything. Enjoyed all of them. Uh, bluegrass and everything. Okay, pentatonics. Has life been all right? Sorry, pentatonics. Has life been all right, though? Yes. Life's been great. Life's been very good. Okay, do you think it's better to learn pentatonic cage by shape or associate? Okay, whoa, whoa, Malcolm, let's see. Do you think it's better to learn pentatonic cage by shape or by associated chord shape? Oh, okay. I th are you saying, like... <laughs> okay. I th I, the way I see it, if you watch my two videos, 
okay, I know my pentatonic boxes. We learn our pentatonic boxes. And somebody, even on Patreon, said, hey, you know, I chimed in and said, you know, what about learning pentatonic boxes through caged instead of the numbers? And my, res my response is, well, you, everybody wants to know what a pentatonic scale is. All right, you gotta know what it is, what makes it work, the intervals inside of it, where the root note is, where the intervals are, that four, you can bend to a five in minor, all this stuff, right? And once you understand what the pentatonic scale is, then you wanna see how it clicks into the cage. My last two pentatonic videos, just go to Stitch Method, go to Videos, and also, um, yeah, go to Videos, and just click on like newest, you'll see my two uh, most recent ones, one for major pentatonics, one for minor. Once you understand what a minor pentatonic really is, and a major pentatonic uh, really is, which you can find on my channel and everywhere on YouTube, um, then navigating, navigating by the cage shape within, I think is a very, very great way to see it. I will stop talking. Very good answer. Never thought about that flat fifth during the shift down three frets. Oh, you got to, man. That's that's where the... Uh, the oh, wait. Sorry. Nope. No, my God, come on. I don't know why. It's been a long. I, I did not sleep for 24 hours. So, boom. that's where that comes from. That's the look at the E minor pentatonic, right? Or uh, it'd be an E blue scale. But when you make it a G major. Here comes the sun. Why is here comes the sun cape on the seventh fret? I'll tell you why, because that makes an A chord, right? Ooh. Ooh. And George Harrison wanted to sing it in, in the key of A. Is he wanted to sing it in A. Let's just say he had a raspier voice. It could have been on the key, it could have been the fifth fret, and we could have heard. You know, it's just where his voice is that he wanted to do it comfortably. And that's why it was capo on the seventh fret. And if I could play the song correctly from my mind, that'd be good too. All right, uh, will I post this afterwards? Yeah, why not? Uh, what is this? Can you explain why it's a different box shape for major form? Okay, I see that one coming, but it went by. It'll come on my computer. One second. Can you explain why it's a different box shape for major or minor? Form 3 and C minor, but form 4. Yes. Okay, so uh, I want you to watch those videos again. Oh, oh, actually, Rob, Rob Brown, who has asked this question, uh, I want you, do, have you seen my Do You Know Your 5 Pentatonic Box video? Okay, you can type in just, I'm just asking you, stitch method, five pentatonic boxes, you'll see the thing comes up. Each, okay, each pentatonic shape, and I talk about this all the time on my channel, so I'm not like, you know, this isn't like, <laughs> I'm giving you like million dollar information. Pentatonics, I have an idea, remind me about my idea by the way. Pentatonics are known as pentatonic scales, and they are not major and they are not minor. They are pentatonic scales, they are like stem cells, and you can have a minor root note and name it a minor pentatonic. You can have it a major root note and name it a major pentatonic. And the idea is when you name something a minor pentatonic, your first note is gonna be a flat three away. That's it, boom, boom. And so this would be an A minor pentatonic, A minor pentatonic, and then everyone understands this. But an A major pentatonic, now you have to have a different set of notes. And so now it becomes a form two, and this is from all in the videos. But you see like, here's my one, here's my two, here's my major third. It's my one, two, major, third. So really, the idea is, is that when you have a minor root note, you're gonna have your first note after your, your second note is gonna be a minor third. When you have a pen, when you have a major pentatonic, your second note is the is the two, and your third note is the major third. And the shapes, of, the places of where those intervals are in relation to that root note change. And so where you have, he's saying in a C shape, you have a form four. But in the C minor shape, you have the form three because the root note has, the, the, the action, not the root note, but where the minor third now lands changes your pentatonic shape. And so somebody said, say that again. I'm not gonna say it again. I want you to watch my two videos and make watch the latest two videos and just sit and hear my voice saying, I trust that you can do it. I trust, ah, oh, the minor third. I trust that you can do it. I have an idea. I have an idea. 
and I want to talk to you about my idea, if that's okay. You guys ready? <laughs> okay. Oh, Amy Weiss got it. All right, you guys ready for my idea? And I, and and you tell me if you like it. And I this will be my this will be my next this will be month this will be Tuesday's video if you want it. I have a lot on the list. So John Mayer did a live Instagram feed doing uh, a blues guitar lesson. And a lot of my friends and uh, uh, well, Facebook people and Instagram people and, and subs, they all emailed and said, Did you, have you seen this? Have you seen this? Have you seen this? All right. And it's like, yeah. And I watched it. And a lot of people said, even on my Facebook page, like, can Stitch actually say what is going on in this video? Because I watched it. And let me tell you, I mean, John Mayer is nasty. He's really good. He's really, really good. But what I want to do is I want to watch the entire video. I want to timestamp it. And I want to translate what John Mayer was saying for everyone who is not on John Mayer's level. Kind of like a video like, what the heck did he mean here? And the way I want to do it is I can't play the video. I don't want to get a copyright strike. I will say, okay, at, at 4 minutes and 15 seconds, he says this. And what I want to do is I want to say, all right, you can find this on my Blues Primer playlist, this video, and this is what he's doing. And then at 4 minutes and 18 seconds, whatever, you know, he says this. And this is what he means by this. And it's as clear as day if you watch it here. Because I'm not going to lie, everything he said is available on my Blues Primer playlist. Done. All right? And so I think that I'm going to translate John Mayer into how to learn it from Stitch method. I'm not on his level. I'm not sure I'm on Stitch. You're, if you're a human being, you're on Stitch's level. This is, this is, a, this is a, a channel about being human playing guitar, not about showing off. All right? So I hope that I think it's a really cool idea. And I think that a lot of people like it because John Mayer does have a lot of great ideas. Um, but I think just translating them into um, a, an electrified thought process that can get into our fingers where we understand it and keep us moving. And I can help just like, just be the translator, you know, like I think it's going to be great. So that's my idea. Uh... <laughs> yeah. And, and distractive, uh, as David said, when I watched it, I thought, oh, the things he's focusing on now is what Stitch has been saying for a while. Well, thank you, Dave. Um, so, sounds fun. Okay, what is the upper limit on the neck that the capo is still useful? I answered that earlier, and I think uh, at most the ninth fret. I think seventh fret, seventh fret you can get, um, it's hard to explain, watch the video, but seventh fret is easy, and then past the seventh fret you can kind of redo the capo so that you can play off the A string if you need to. All right. So, Man, I wish I could tell you guys a good joke. I just need a good joke or hear a good joke. I thought a big appeal capo was ease of playing. Okay, um, was ease of playing and the nicer tone you get. Never going back again. So, I, I want to know what you mean by that. <laughs> what do you think of when composing a solo? What's your thought process? Well, that's a video I have going for, um, um, well, I have, I have a couple videos, um, Kevin, um, and I want you to scroll through uh, there's, um, crap, stay right here, just stay right here, just, you stay right here. Hold on, I'm gonna, you guys sit and talk amongst yourselves, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a video for you. Did you. Have you seen my video where I talk about writing, are you talking about improvising or are you talking about, like, writing a solo? Because I have a, a video about writing a solo using poetry, writing it down, hearing what you play, and then throwing the poem away so nobody ever hears it, and I feel like that's what Slash does. Um, so, I can't get to the video, but, um... There is a video that I have about that. Maybe somebody will post it. And, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Billy, thank you. You don't have to do that. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, oh. Ah, Billy, I see what you did there. I'm going to answer that question. All right, so <laughs> Billy here says, uh, and Billy, did you get my email, by the way? Did you get the email? I, and he says, I don't understand why in this cable lesson I have the one, two, three, five, six, and back to a five and not the seven. And I want to address that. Uh, so, time out. We're going to talk about this. Great question. I talk about how in the key of C, oh, they'll do the key of G, right? Um, yeah, G. And so if you look here, uh, no, 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 we'll do the key of C, okay? So the idea, okay, good. The idea is, if you look, I talk about in the, key, in the C stuff, um, the C stuff here is C, all right? And then D minor, and then E minor, F, G, A minor, and then you can play a B minor 7 flat 5.
Now, I want to show you what the notes are on a B minor 7 flat 5. The B minor 7 flat 5, which you can kind of play uh, like this, like... It's not a chord, you can actually play like this, I don't know why I'm doing it. It's not a chord you find a lot in singer-songwriter music because it's very tense. But I want to show you the notes. It's B, D, F, and A. B, remember that. Write that down. B, D, F, and A. And in music, it is so common that you take the five chord of the key, okay? C, D minor, E minor, F, G, G. And you play it sometimes as a G7 because it comes home to the one. So the question is, why did I put in that G7 instead of the B minor 7 flat 5? Well, let's look at the, um, I'm going to answer that Jethro Tull question in a second, okay? But let's look at the notes in a G7 chord. G, B, <laughs> D, and F. B, D, F, okay? Three of those notes are in, the, are in the minor 7 flat 5, and this chord does one hell of a job of bringing it back home. So you find a lot of singer-songwriters that don't play the minor 7 flat 5 because it is not um, a, a chord that plays well. But the G7, the 5 chord, as a dominant chord, does the job, has three out of the four notes, and it brings the, everything back together. So... What, what is this going on with Jeff and, and Jeff Hotel? Yes, I, I use the dominant arpeggios, but still have a hard time to visualize. Okay, so listen, I'll go on and say this. They're, they're talking about the myth of the Mixolydian. Um, the Mixolydian scale itself is not for, it's not for the blues. That's major pentatonics, in my opinion. It's major pentatonics. You're going to put some minor thirds in there. If you play the full, I'm talking the full Mixolydian scale on top of the blues, you're getting contemporary jazzy blues which I hate. Just letting you know that. I hate it. If you're playing like full, like one, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven, one, and playing with that mindset, and I mean like doing like... No. If you find the mixture of major and minor pentatonics... Like, just like what Jeff said, that looks like it looks like a, um, uh, a Mixolydian scale, but really, when you lay a major pentatonic and a minor pentatonic on top of each other, you're going to see the map of a Mixolydian, but you're not playing it like a Mixolydian. You're not playing it like a Mixolydian. You're, playing, you're mixing major and minor, which is another video about how, that I'm going to make about how to properly mix major and minor, which is a really cool thing. Um, when Mayer was talking about thinking playing to the left of the first position pentatonics, he mean, yeah, he meant the fifth position. That's exact. you know, he's saying, you know, you're watching him, he's like, well, you have the equator here and doing this. And it's interesting to watch him say, hey, you know, like, instead of playing in the form one, play in the form five, which is here. All this is on stitch method. All of it. All right. So here's your A minor, form one. And here is your form five connecting right behind it. And what he's saying is this, is that it's not just about like, it's not about going into the form five. He's talking about staying in the form five. And what happens, all right, <laughs> all right what happens is that this plays differently. Look, here's, here's the root note. This is the, this is, <laughs> this is the never lost pentatonic. And these lines like, really? play different than, like, they play different. So what he's saying is if you put yourself in a different physical position, your riffs tend to change because here you're, you have your root note here and the scale is behind it. So you have a lot of like, but here's a root note and a lot of the scales in front of it. And so you move and you get different types of sounds. And yes, John Mayer was mixing major and minor and I'll show everybody how to do that. It's quite... Simple. Oh, my God. Am I talking too fast, too much? How am I doing with staying focused on the questions this time? That's the question. <sighs> am I answering questions? Are we doing well? Are you guys having fun? Billy, again, thank you so much for that. That was very nice of you. You didn't have to do that, but thank you. It helps. Uh, could you make a video about how you can jam using the cage system without using backing tracks? Um, well... Cap Smith, have you seen my video? Have you seen my video, Did Hendrix Use Cage? That's, ah, hey, Jared, how are you? Um, have you seen that? Because that would be the best way to, huh, uh, could you make a video about how, well, yes, that's easy stuff. I mean, not easy, but like, okay, 
like here's an A chord. Okay, I can play a form five on top of it as discussed in my previous videos. Or I can connect the Hendrix style into the form one. And you can just, you know. Am I drunk? No, you moron. There's a person, <laughs> I'm kidding, there's a person this articulate. Sorry, I didn't call you a moron. I just don't like being called drunk because A, I don't drink. And B, does a person who's drunk talk fast? No, they talk with a slur. <laughs> anyway, uh, hey, Stitch, good uh, place to find lessons. Uh, is, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't watch. No, I'm not going to recommend it because I don't know. I don't watch other YouTubers, man. I don't. That's the craziest thing. I, I, I'm flattered that people are like, hey, do you, do you do this? Do you do that? Nope. Nope. I don't. I teach all the time. <laughs> That's it. Oh, man. And so uh, I want to answer that question. But the idea is, is you can find your chord. Watch the Hendrix, did Hendrix used cage video. All right. Where do I teach? I teach online solely now. Zoom lessons 24-7. But I do do group lessons. I do do. I do, in fact do live group master classes if you go to stitchmethod.com uh don't judge it by the schedule it's up there now a whole new schedule is going to be coming out um for june hopefully ah oh, i really love your story about your aha moment after the fish concert in fact it was a very good story um uh, well i yeah i the thing is i play i love the, the grateful dead whatever hold on for a second I heard a bang, so I just want to make sure everything's okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I love the Grateful Dead and Jam Band stuff, so when I write stuff, it's going to sound like that. Yes, I know I said doo-doo. That's why I laughed. All right, so... Uh, <laughs> so anyway, so that's that. Let's see. Uh, what chord shape should I use with the capo and which fret to put in a strong position? Yeah, ju Justin. Justin. Justin Reigns. All right, nobody speak. Nobody speak. Justin Reigns, did you see the video that I made? Did you see the video that I made today or released today? I'm going to wait for Justin Reigns. I'm not trying to embarrass you. Don't worry. Nobody can see you except for the 133 people that are here. It's fine. Okay? But did you see the video that I released today on Capo Theory? Because that will answer your question. <laughs> I'm going to wait. Oh, okay, so at what point can you effectively use theory for songwriting? Ooh, uh, I want to do some songwriting videos, but to make a long story short, when you're stuck, okay, when you're stuck, um, and that's what's really cool. Usually when you're, when you're writing something, like if you're writing something, Oh my god like how do I get out of this part like when you're stuck you're gonna start using your theory of like okay well this is my F sharp um, how do I move out of this okay well I know if I turn into a dominant seventh chord I can take it to a five and that can create some music or I can go to the five before then you start to think about how to get stuck or how to move and you start getting hunches and so um, yes okay watch that video Justin so the idea is I find that when you get stuck um, with your natural like balloon filled amount of songwriting that it helps a lot it also helps with writing solos uh, i'll stop talking all right I, I, I gotta get going soon i gotta get going soon <sighs> the coolest thing you show me form one major is overlaid over the form five minor form one major oh the connect next to it okay okay Spaghetti Western music? I don't know much of it. Let me study it if I can and maybe one day. Okay? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, my master classes. Oh, yeah. You know what's so funny? I only have two. Oh, I have three master classes. One to share with Sean Daniel. But I have two blues master classes. I'm not going to lie to you. They are you know, awesome. Um, and I should make more. Thank you, Jared. Happy Memorial Day weekend to you. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, who invented the capo? James R. Capo. That's my joke. That's my joke, just to let you know. When my, <laughs> my kids are always like, who invented the fire hydrant? I'm like, Mr. James R. Hydrant. You know, so 
use that if you're a dad. How to improvise. One first guitar has a capo and second guitar has a solo. Okay, that I can't answer right away. Hold on for one second. Hold on for one second. Everybody silence. Everybody silence. I'm going to answer that question about solo and capo in a later video. But this guy just asked, do you have a stitch method for blues? Now I'm going to look right at you. Hold on for one second. Where is this guy? Hold on. Where is it? MT Picker. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at you, wherever my camera is. Go to Stitch Method. Go to stitchmethod.com. Okay, go to Stitch Method on YouTube. Better yet, there it is. Just type in Blues Primer Playlist. And you will have access, take no offense anyone out there, to the best blues tutorials out there. The end. I'll sit back now. I promise you that. All right, so, all right. I got to get going soon. Um, whoa. Okay. All right. You know, Billy earned this one. Billy has earned this one. In one of my blues... <laughs> oh, it's thunder. That's what I'm hearing. I got to go and soon. Um, because I have a lesson. But the idea is this. In one of my Blues Primer videos, I talk about a sock riddle. And this is how we're going to end this. I know everybody has classes. Everybody, uh, everybody has questions. But I'm going to end with this one here. The sock riddle that I presented in one of my videos, which is, if you have a draw, drawer filled with five different pair of socks. I forgot to mention maybe in that video, it's five different colored pairs of socks. If the lights go out, how many times do you have to like pick a sock one at a time out, out of the drawer to know that you have a pair? So the question is, you have five different colored pairs of socks, you put them in a the drawer, you do this, da 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 da, okay, and then you turn off the lights, how many times do you have to pick off, pick up a, uh, a sock out of the drawer the lights off to ensure you have a pair? I'll wait here. And while you're waiting, make sure you do go to stitchmethod.com for the lesson, go to the lessons page and check out the, the group lesson schedule. But I have to make a new schedule uh, coming up for June. I do have a class tomorrow about cage scales. And if you want to join there, sign up. You will not be... <laughs> You will, not, you will not be upset. You'll be very happy. Everyone that takes one of these lessons is like, all right? So, uh, Taryn Smith. Taryn Smith, uh, yes, he wins with six. You have to reach in six times, all right? If you reach in six times, you have a guaranteed pair. Let that chew up your mind. Thank you for being human, and thank you for being here. Have a beautiful, beautiful week. Check out my most recent videos, stitchmethod.com for a group lesson schedule. I have one tomorrow. If you want to learn all about cage scales, I'm not just talking the guy patterns i'm talking about like how to can use them and feel empowered that's what they're all about and so i'll stop uh i'll stop talking wait sean how do you sliding six i have a whole video on that go look at it i gotta go you guys are amazing as always thank you so much it means a lot that you're all here take care bye bye